Hello, everybody. Welcome to How to Make Your Wife Happy and Healthy. In today's episode, we have a wonderful dish with the meat that people love to death, as well as a vegetable, or is it a fruit? I don't know. But it's used all the time in the Super Bowl. You want to know what this dish is? Well, come on, everybody. Let's get cooking. Today's shout out goes to Anthony, 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 Anthony Espinosa. Thanks, Anthony, for the continued support. If you want to get a shout out on my next video, stay tuned to the end to find out how. Here are the ingredients for five sandwiches, which will feed a family of four 15 strips of pre cooked bacon, five slices of iceberg lettuce. About two tomatoes, peeled and sliced. Two large avocados, peeled and sliced to about a half inch thickness. Ten slices of your favorite bread, toasted. About five tablespoons of mayonnaise. Okay, to start off my BLTA, I am going to use pre-cooked bacon and just heat it up in the microwave. Why? It's fast, it's convenient. The other thing is I don't like dealing with all that oil after you cook bacon in a skillet. So I'm just gonna use Costco pre-cooked bacon and we're going to heat up in the microwave. Now these sheets are too big to put all in one, so I take some scissors, cut it in half, and we're gonna do five at a time. So that's three sets of five for 15 slices of bacon. When I do that, so I'm gonna alternate their direction so I can fit more, because my plates are kind of small, and I don't want them to be too unfull, too crowded. So there we got our five slices on. Put the wax paper on top of the plate, and now it's ready for the microwave. Okay, I'm gonna show you my two plates. This with the bacon in the microwave. So put all the bacon on the plate, we got it ready. Your microwave experience will vary, but we have found that our microwave, a little on the higher on the water side, but if we go 58 seconds for four slices, comes out nice and crisp when it's done. You want to get it really quickly because if you don't, it's going to stay greasy and not very good. So I'm going to take it out. Now how I do it is I take and put a paper towel right on top, flip it over, wax paper or not, there it is. Then we take the other paper towel, put it on top, and then I place it onto a second plate, a different plate. And once I've done that, I pat it down so we can get all that grease out. Nice, firm, pat. Get as much grease out as you can because greasy bacon is not very crisp bacon. So if we get on our microwave, it was a 1200 watt microwave and it takes about 58 seconds for five slices of pre-cooked bacon. Now I'm gonna do the others. Using the same plate that I used to heat, use a second plate for taking out the grease. I'm gonna do some more and use more paper towels. <laughs> now 
Next one's done. Take it out. Use the paper towels you use on the top of the last set. Uh, paper towels, flip it over in your hand. New bacon, nice and crisp. Take another paper towel, put it on top. So I use three sets of paper towels. When I do more bacon than that, now that I've got it, we're going to press it down, get the extra grease out. You can see the grease coming through that napkin. And then set up the last set. This plate may be a little hot, but it's usually not too hot to the touch. Put the bacon on. Another 58 seconds for the last set of bacon. So while that bacon's good, the bottom layer has probably gotten enough grease off of it. So I am going to take off that bottom layer put it directly onto this plate for my later usage. If we're eating the bacon directly, I would use this for my serving plate. That's something I put in a sandwich. I'm not going to, so I'm gonna set the next bacon and get this one ready, the bottom one, to take the next bacon out. Microwave done, got our extra bacon. Napkin on top, flip over, wax paper back there. More napkins on top. Put it back on the plate and squeeze out all the excess grease. Now I'm gonna set the bacon aside and let it cool while you finish up the rest of the ingredients. So once the bacon is nice and cooked, I like to go with the tomatoes. I'm going to peel them for you in front of the camera. Usually I peel over the trash can. The peelings go straight in the trash can. So you don't have this. But for today, since I want you to see my peeling, i uh, make sure to peel them. We're going to put it right here. Now we successfully peel the tomatoes, we're going to slice them. I like to just cut them in half so my slices aren't so big. I'm not going to use that top part. You don't want to use the top part. We're going to slice them nice and thin. Two at a time makes it easier, faster. Nice and thin. You may have to have a good knife to make them nice and thin. Now I'm going to throw away the top part and not keep it because of that little part. You can keep that too. If you want to cut it out, you can divot it out. Like so, and keep the slice. We're using Roma tomatoes today, why? Because they were the cheap ones. That's what I do in the market. If the ripened vine ones are cheapest, and sometimes they are, then I go with those, but in this case, the Romos were the cheapest, about a dollar a pound, so we went with Roma tomatoes. Now that I got my tomato slices, I'll set those aside. While I prepare the avocado next. In the market yesterday, the avocados that I got were the small ones because the big ones were not soft at all. They were hard as a rock and those would not make for good avocado eating. You want to make sure they're a little bit soft to the touch. When you squeeze them, you feel a little give. The more give, the softer they are. Sometimes the better, but if they're too soft, then at that point, you're unable to eat them because they're too brown. All right. All right, with the next one, I'll show you the way to take out the seed in a better way. As soon as you cut the avocado through the top, 
work it around because it's around the seat. The seat is hard. If we get that seat out, pound it with the knife and twist, and it comes out. And you take it off the knife. Easiest way to get rid of the seat. All right, so with the avocados here. So I'm going to slice them inside of the peel. You can use your fingers, you can feel the knife going through. It's not going to cut through the peel. It's a nice softness through the avocado to the edge. And from there, I'm just going to take them, push on the back like so with my two thumbs. Now it's going to take the slices out. Now they might not come out whole. You might peel a little on the edge in this way. Those are going to be nice avocado slices. Good for sandwiches. So now you're probably going to have avocado on your thumbs from this. Don't worry about that. Wipe them off. Do not lick it off because then you're introducing germs into the avocados when you use your thumbs again. So you wipe off your hands with a towel or you wash it off when you're done. Push on the back to help those slices come out. Keep the peel away from the avocado because the peel doesn't taste good. And the next one. Slices right through. You can feel the knife hitting the edge. Go to the back, push them forward, push them out. Use your thumbs to get in underneath the peel to fully take them out. One more to go. There we now have our avocado and our tomato. We're ready for the lettuce. Next we're going to wash some lettuce. So I'm going to peel the lettuce off of the head of iceberg lettuce. That may see. It looks like about three will do good for us. You can do three, four, five, somewhere in there. Once you have peeled off the lettuce, make sure to watch each leaf. I'll show you how to dry it really well after that. Be right back with the washed lettuce. Now that I've thoroughly washed the lettuce in the water, just run it through water, we're going to dry it. It's best to use paper towels if you want to dry. You can use a salad spinner too, but with big leaves, it doesn't work quite as well. So I'm just going to lay it on top of a paper towel. I have a little extra on the side. And we're just going to roll it up. So you don't want to have wet lettuce in your salad, in your sandwich. So it's best to put it into a paper towel and just roll it up. Once I've rolled it up, a little squeeze, get some of the extra into the paper towel, and your lettuce is much drier now. Now we're ready for the final, final ingredient to prepare, which is the bread. Now you could use plain non-toasted bread, but I cannot live with non-toasted bread for a BLTA. So we're going to toast our bread. The bread that our family likes best is the Oro Wheat Country Buttermilk Bread. This is the one the kids use the most, so that's why I buy it. If it's up to me, I'd probably buy more of a wheat variety that I like better. You can buy whatever toast you like, but make sure you toast it. Otherwise, the BLTA definitely will not be as good.
Those have popped up. Time to take it out and ready to put on to your sandwich. All right, so we've prepared most of our ingredients. We also have all the bacon. Gonna remove it out so you can see what the bacon looks like. Wonderful. I use three slices of bacon per sandwich. But now for the star of our show. Mayo. We're gonna use about a tablespoon of mayonnaise, enough to spread onto each slice of bread. That's close to the tablespoon right there. Spread it on the bread, get a nice even layer all the way to the edge. It's a thing I learned in my days of cooking at a pizza restaurant. Make sure you spread to the edge. All the way to the edge. We we're making garlic bread. The butter has to go to the edge. You know why? If you don't, the edges of the bread will burn instead of toast, while the rest of it is toasted. So always to the edge. There we go. Beautiful. Next, I use three slices of bacon. No. I like to sandwich my bacon inside, so I'm going to use some lettuce next on one side. So you can rip off slices that are nice and big. How much you like? That looks good. Then I'll put tomato on this side. As much or as little as you like. And then the avocado with the tomato. Some good slices in here. Good healthy slices. And finally, on the lettuce, I'll do three slices of bacon. Break them in half to fit. One, two, and three. Oh, an extra slice right there. Now I'm gonna fold it together. I'm going to cut it in half. You could now not cut it, leave it full, but I always prefer it cut in half. And there is your BLTA. My sandwich. Mayonnaise, avocado, tomato, lettuce, bacon, bread, more mayonnaise. BLT. Um nom nom. BLT A avocado. Mm. The bacon and texture. The lettuce is kind of crunchy. The tomato adds softness. The bread adds softness. The avocado adds goodness. So I guess it tastes good. I don't want to say it tastes very good, but I guess it tastes good-ish. Um, um. Are you done, girl? Taste that one more taste. Mm-hmm. Talk your brother, Pete. Mmm, yum. That's really good. Like, all the flavors of the country bread, the lettuce and tomato, which cannot be tasted at all, and the thing that really comes out about this is probably the avocado, the bacon, because those sort of things are really punched through. I think it mainly tastes 
I like mayonnaise. Though. I think the mayonnaise, all kind of making those the three things comes through. But other than that, the bread, the lettuce, and tomato aren't tasted, aren't able to be tasted at all, which makes it much better. Happy healthy wife, Chef Barry, here you might need to crunch that like button, just like the crunchiness in our BLTA made it also enjoyable for the kids. Leave a comment down below on what you think of BLTs with the added avocado. Have you liked it? Have you tried it? And if you could slip the word shrimp into your comment down below, you'll have a chance to shout out in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of all my new videos that come out on Mondays. Thanks for watching. Have a happy and healthy day.